for staying with us. We are now being joined by Barrister Peterson Ihuenze, who is a legal practitioner as well as a public affairs analyst. And he will be uh, speaking to us today about some of the headline stories on national dailies you're very much welcome barrister it's a pleasure Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you here in the studio very well I'm, well I'm happy. V very yeah. quickly um yes. the the federal government has made some strong and stern statements concerning sponsors of the nationwide protest diaspora sponsors i may add and uh, it has said that it has gone ahead to freeze accounts and has placed them under a watch list what implication does this have to uh, the uh, notion of the protest in the first place? Okay, well, the most important thing is that people have protested. There has been a, a protest by the people and uh, the yes. government on its own knows that uh, uh, the people are not happy that things are hard. And government has also come up to own up to the fact that uh, things are not going in a way that it should go. So, um, well, the protest has uh, its advantage and its disadvantages. Yes. The advantage in the sense that uh, somebody was telling me that now that uh, the uh, uh, president is signing everything, signing this and signing that and signing that. So, well, that may cause for that. And also, there are damages and uh, uh, loss that, record, that was recorded in a couple of places. So that is the loss of it. Then the government, you know, arresting uh, people that are sponsoring the protests, well, uh, whatever, however they look at it, and uh, whatever it is, I, I believe that people have made their statement. And another thing is to arrest somebody, and that is also to prosecute. Yes. In fact, even the person that they arrested in Canada, I'm also looking at what charge will the government give to that campus. Because uh, as a lawyer, in the case of Aoka Fagwimi, the Supreme Court heard that before somebody can be liable, that the person must, the offense must be uh, expressly set, stated, and the punishment prescribed. There's no new offense that say if you saw a Russian flag or any other country's flag that you be you have this imprisonment or you'll be you'll be liable and all that. But let's watch as it is. Government on their own, yes, it's good to fish out, you know, uh, who are the sponsors of this program and also look at uh, what uh, they what they have and the external factors you know affecting the, the country is a welcome development. It's good that government uh, stop because I, I strongly believe that the protest is enough for now well talking about the russian flag uh, you, you are a legal practitioner yes. and I'm, I'm sure you are very familiar with what is enshrined in the constitution and the criminal uh, uh, uh conducts uh, of code of conduct in the constitution with regards to uh, a treasonable felony and the chief of defense staff has in strict terms and strong terms mentioned that hoisting the flag of a, of another nation in a sovereign state like Nigeria is a treasonable felony. It's not just the idea of hoisting it. It's the concepts behind it. The fact that it was hoisted during a protest. That is what makes it different. Don't you think so? Well, uh, 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 for the fact that the chief of uh, defense staff said that uh, the um, whoever that carries the flag, chief of defense staff is not the law. It's not a what court. does the law say with regards to what this? The, the, what the, in respect of that, you ask what are these people doing? Do they declare that place a republic? The only thing that they did was they were carrying the flag. What I saw in the video clip and on the internet, they were celebrating with the flag. There's no need that say that if you celebrate with any flag, that is a sin. Take, okay, by now, say whatever that is happening now, take a case, of, a case study of some a program that they do in churches and all that. You see that whenever, or they say it may be cultural or not, people will carry different flags to fly and all that. Does that make that a crime? Do they, in the course of flying the flag, declare that place the Republic of Russia? No. Well, so, and also for someone to be criminally liable, there is what they call actus rehus and mens re. There are both a duty mind and duty act. In the intention of the guy carrying flag, does he mean that he's saying that that place is Republic of Russia? No. Well, uh, this assertion that you have made is probably being taken from a different point of view from other uh, people who share a different mindset to it. If one is hoisting a flag of a foreign nation in a church or a mosque or even a hotel or during a sports event in the country, mm -hmm. 
it holds an entirely entirely different sentiment as opposed to during a protest a protest that has already been termed a riot which has turned violent in the last couple of days which has seen people killed has seen properties vandalized government infrastructure and institutions you know looted it's an entirely different sentiment and there was a statement uh, on, on one of the national dailies yesterday where Zamfara youths were calling on the Russian government to come to their aid because the federal government of Nigeria is killing them in court. <laughs> well, it's, it's another dimension to it. Well, uh, protest, is it outlaw? It's certainly not, but, so what are we but, but, about? but there has to be some principles laid out, some yeah. guidelines yeah. laid yes. out yes. for protest. Yes. And, and you would agree with me that there is a thin line between protest and riot. And what we have seen mm. in major parts of the country, especially in the northern part of the country, in, in, since the protests began, mm. have been riotings and not protests. <laughs> <laughs> is it riot or protest? Well, that, that is exactly the <laughs> point protest. I'm pushing home. No, it's, a, it's a protest turned riot. It, well, it, you are the one that is saying it's a riot. What, what is everywhere is protest? And don't it, if you want to stretch it the way they are going by the government, you say that it has turned violent. We have never had issue of uh, riot. Not Nothing was said about riot. Why? What why, we know why now is that, there was a protest. Yes. And that protest was hijacked. That is the language of the government. Then if they say that protest was hijacked, what will the government do? Government has the state apparatus. Government has the security. They have all that is required to quench or to you know, suppress such a this. So in that regard, you can also, you know, what, the, what they call contributory negligence. Because if there is a protest, the law you know, permits wants to protest, okay? What the government needs to do, in fact, prior to the protest, the government said, we will provide security. Like we saw what happened in Lagos, there was provision of security. In fact, the police and the and the, and the the uh, protesters were together, you know. Also in Kaduna, I saw people driving APC. So I now said, ah, did these people overpower the military? What happened? They said, no, that they were doing it together. That it was this a military guy that was driving it. And the you know, civilians were on the top of that uh, APC. They were yes. not you know, making jets and all that. So it is a protest. So if that protest go haywire, you should also hold government respect. In fact, when I was coming here, why I was coming here, there was barricade everywhere on the road. And I asked, what is the problem? They said that they want to pre prevent people from gathering for Adego Square. Okay? So these are the measures that government can use in order to, whenever they see that the protest has gone there, to disperse people and also see how you can prevent such from happening. After all, government has intelligence. Why do we have the DSS? Well, well, well there, there are some points uh, as captured on the Daily News Hub that I would want you to respond to. But let's uh, see the Daily News Hub together to read out some of these strap lines. On the front page of the Daily News Hub, uh, it leads with the catchphrase, hashtag and bad governance. FG goes after diaspora sponsors, blocks accounts, puts them on the watch list. As security agencies deploy more operatives to land borders, airports. NIS steps up surveillance to prevent foreign intervention. If any diaspora sponsor enters Nigeria, we will be notified he will be picked up immediately says immigration boss quite strong statements coming in from different quarters of the country uh, today with regards to one uh diaspora sponsors of the protest two hoisting of the flag which obviously the russian embassy has openly refuted claims of having been behind um you know the hoisting of these flags but what do you make of of these strong statements especially from the immigration boss Okay, well, from the immigration boss, you know that just like I said before, that for you to, uh, uh, for somebody to have an age to have committed an offense, there must be a prescribed law, you know, outlawing that act as an offense, and not just outlining that. There is also prescription of uh, punishment yes. therein. Now you say that somebody is sponsoring protests. Protest is it outlawed? You know, most of the things that government does is that they will do at the end of the day, the person will go free. The court will look at it and find that there is no any offense that the person has committed. Yes. Well, government is uh, looking at this uh, from their own perspective, to maybe to see how this thing can be contained and uh, you know curtailed. And which I, to a large extent, I also agree with them because you can't just allow your 
your country to be overrun by you know uh, non-state actors. Yes. So what the government is doing is to see how they can put an end to this. But it goes beyond you know uh, all these. I uh, uh, don't want to call it threats and all that. Okay. What are the social investment programs that you can do that can you know better the lives of the citizens? The essence. Of government is for the, as provided by the United Nations, it's for the welfare and security of the people. So when that is not there, you will see people revoke, revolting against the government. What does government has to offer in terms of employment, in terms of uh, in terms of making life easier for the people? This is over one year that subsidy was removed. No social investment whatsoever that government is doing. Um, recently, the last uh, assembly, there was an executive bill of social investment uh, act to be enacted. I don't know how it is and where it is now. So these are what government needs to look at. Let us have in UK, if you give, give birth, the person is entitled to some, uh, some form of, of entitlement from the government. These are the things that government will do. The people will be, you know, be happy and people will be taken to the street. Why people are protesting is because they are idle. Because there's, you know, economic situation is very harsh and people cannot contend with it. Look at how people are living in the country in droves. It's not good for us. So it, it now behoves on the government to look inwardly and look at the yearnings and aspiration of these protesters. What are they protesting? The cause that they are, you know, they are going for. Are they genuine? Are they jamming? Is it what needs to be done? Government will go back to the drawing board and see what we can do to it. Well, well, in the past couple of years, we've seen protests that have rocked other nations, especially in Africa, leading up to uh, overthrow of governments, toppling of governments, mostly by the military. Now, I know this is a very sensitive topic, but in the recent security emergency security meeting held by service chiefs and the president at the state villa, the chief of defense staff uh, at a press briefing said that on no account will they allow anybody, um, you know, even birth the idea of a change of government. Are we seeing a... And, and here, a report here also says that NIS is stepping up surveillance to prevent foreign intervention. We all know that in those other countries, there was some sort of foreign intervention, especially in places like Mali, Niger, Cote d'Ivoire, where Russia came in and, you know, helped them come into power. And now Russian flags have been hoisted in Nigeria. NIS is stepping up surveillance. A chain of events, if you ask me, what is this leading up to? Well, uh, what, what is leading up to, you know that this, the world is a global village and you cannot just be in isolation. There is internet, there is information technology, people are beginning to know what is happening in the country and what other countries is happening. No country is an island, but what I most commend the NIA and, uh, and what the federal government is doing, you don't just allow external forces to come and overrun your country because the country is a sovereign, a sovereign nation. It's an independent nation, different from every other nation. In as much that we have foreign policy and we also have international relations and bilateral relations and all that. So what government does is, is a good one by ensuring that there is no external forces. Just like what I said, the, uh, uh, the, the step that the government is taking in tracking the account of sponsors and all that yes. is just towards stopping further protests. But what I'm saying, my position is that it's not just stopping the protests. What is the root cause of the protest? Have it been attended? If the the government take a positive step, people are saying that the the president's speech doesn't uh, uh, you know assuage their yearnings and all that. If that is you look go back to the drawing board, does this speech meet up with the demands of the people or the demands of the time? If it is in the negative, other things should should be done because they say when good cannot satisfy the man, perfect is required. You up your game. So these are the things. Government should come up with programs and policies, not just by saying, not just programmation or program, but let there be a, a positive step towards mitigating the hardship that we're experiencing in the country. In fact, every day, every Nigerian is going, uh, 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 is, is getting, wealth is diminishing by virtue of the economic um, reality, the uh, um, uh, inflection, the devaluation of Naira. You are, uh, the Nigerians are not getting richer. Rather, they are getting poorer. Well, it's no news that the country currently is, is uh, experiencing a huge bleeding in its economy. And the president that came out to make um, a nationwide broadcast on Sunday, the 4th of August, yes, touched slightly on the nationwide protest and maybe some demands of the protesters, even though not directly. 
However, we have seen in recent days that the protest is starting to fizzle out in certain parts of the country, especially in Lagos, which was almost unprecedented, un unexpected, uh, pardon me, because uh, it was supposed to be the heart of the protests. In Abuja, the protest has also fizzled out. Rather, we are seeing a more brutal uprising coming up from the northern parts of the country. In the coming days, what, is, what are we expecting? Are we seeing a total stoppage of the protest, thereby, you know, stopping all of these uh, vices that have ra ravaged the country in the past few days? Well, the security agencies, they assist to um, ensure that there is um, orderliness, you know, peace and security in the country. And uh, when, uh, of course, even in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, law, your fundamental rights kato or bow to the national interest, okay? So I strongly believe that this country is, uh, can't just allow it to degenerate, even just what, what happened in Kano and all that, is a call for the government to make sure that of course you know that this protest they say is 10 days or thereabouts yes and uh, i don't know whether they are looking at 10 days and another thing after 10 days is there any possibility of stopping and another thing is that these guys are not doing anything and before you understand? Be before the 10 days elap elapsed we have seen a decline in the number of protesters hitting the streets yes that's what i'm saying that that government should find a way to assuage the yearnings and aspiration of the people and also see how to pacify them to leave the street, not just leave, uh, pacifying them, go ahead and do those things that are expected of the government to do. Minimum wage, 70,000. Okay, look at what the governors are saying, that they cannot pay 70,000. How much is 70,000 naira? 70,000 naira cannot do average Nigeria for one week. But, but that bill has been passed into law already. It, yes, it's, it, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's um, um, a, a national bill, okay? Yes. The state also have their own. Both of us know that even when thirty thousand naira was, you know, enacted into law, some states even to date has not met up with the condition. Yes. You know, and of course you understand that we are operating a federalism. So at a certain stage, the state will also, you know, interpret this law and implement it the way it suits them. So that's another thing. I, I somebody told me that Lagos said that that's, uh, fifty thousand or thereabout and all that. So that these are the issues. That are there. Federal will pay, but will the state pay? Well, quite quite an interesting question there, uh, Barrister. Let me get your take on this. The former vice president and uh, former presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alaji uh, Tiku Abubakar, has uh, issued stern warnings to service chiefs in the country. He said, and I quote: "Use lethal force on protesters. Face trial for crimes against humanity." End of quote. What is your reaction to this? Okay. As a legal practitioner he, that yes, you are. Yes. He, what he said, what he said, he, he appreciated the fact that, just like I said, uh, protesting or right to protest is guaranteed. Yes. Both in our domestic laws and international laws that we are, you know, we are, we are, um, we have adopted and we are parties to. So what article is just saying is that you cannot use a hammer to kill mm -hmm. Um, a fly. The military, they have the gun, they have the fact. There was what happened in one of the incidences during this uh, uh, protest. The police were shooting, uh, what do they call it, dummy bullets. Yes. But when the military came, they were shooting live bullets. Live bullets. You understand? So you see the disparity and even ordinary civilian, when you hear that dummy, you don't know one that is dummy and the other. Only that one can scare people away. So you use minimal force. These people are our countrymen. They are our, our people you don't just kill. we need you to survive but there have been so. there have been footages of of security personnel on the streets using you know water horses to disperse protesters however this this, this did not work as the protesters were withstanding the force of the water horses <laughs> so i i think that must have been the reason why some sort of lethal force had to be used yeah that little force you, you don't kill somebody in that little force even in, even in, in, in international uh, humanitarian law, in, is, you know, of course, now what is applicable is fundamental rights. Then if we are at war, what will be applicable is international humanitarian law. The international humanitarian law prescribed how 
how you operate during war period or war time. A soldier that surrender, you don't kill him. You don't burn market place, you don't burn mosques, you don't burn churches, you don't burn you know artifacts and you all don't that. Burn schools. Then, you don't, and so forth. Then now somebody you know that doesn't have gun, he doesn't have a uh, 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 tear gas, he doesn't have you are shooting at him. It apply application of uh, maximum force. So what I'm saying is this, there are other there are other bullets that doesn't kill. Uh, there is no any protester that you shoot a rubber bullet on somebody that will still be there. All of them will disperse. There is also this uh, uh, tear gas and all that. You can still use it and all that. So I think he's saying these people still deserve their fundamental right of expression. They're expressing themselves. You are trained. You are being paid by the taxpayers' money, with the taxpayers' money, to protect these people. And you cannot kill who you are protect protecting. Well, you, 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 and of, and of course, yes. When you go against the rules of engagement, remember that you know some some bad acts in the in the in the in the law enforcement agencies. They do what they whatever we have seen where they keep people and all that and all that. So what he's saying is that you are still under the law, forgetting about whether your domestic uh, engagement or whatever can cut up with you or whether they can look the other side. Even if they look the other side, we can. One can take it, still take it up to a place that you cannot influence, and even your architecture and your structure cannot even influence. So it's a welcome development. Well, uh, talking about usage of lethal force, live bullets, and ammunition in uh, dispersing protesters, there is quite a sad report coming in from uh, Zaria and Kano quarters, has captured on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper where about four teenagers and one bride-to-be have been killed. Uh, it reads, protests. How four teenagers, bride-to-be, were killed in Kano and Zaria. A scene captured on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, CSOs, one security agents involved, prosecuted. FG places sponsors on watch list. Use of lethal force against protesters, crime against humanity, Atiku says. We are investigating incidents, army and police how would you react to this yes it is in line with what uh um Allah said if okay take what the um, emphasis say. they say we are investigating which means there is a crack there is a wrong okay so uh, i i commend him for speaking out because if such person or persons are not speaking out these people will you know disengage the rules of engagement and uh, you know go against the the rules of engagement yeah. so i commend him for coming out to speak you know you, you, you know this country belongs to us it belongs to all of us and this is where we belong we can't just allow things to they have the right to protest fine and just like what we are saying the people that they killed there are other ways that can be applied or means of or rules of engagement that can be applied other than little other force. than you know that all, other than you know killing because as only been Nigeria is not only play that, that there is protest we have seen protests in international scene and all that in the UK and in Bangladesh do you hear that they kill four persons or seven persons or so, certainly that. not yet that's what we are saying are they not the same the same the same military are they not this are they not trained Quite a number of arrests have been made in those uh, climbs of the world. And also in Nigeria, uh, hundreds of people have been arrested and remanded in prisons by uh, the mobile court that we've seen. However, my question now is, uh, I believe I speak the minds of many Nigerians when I say what would likely be the penalty, uh, you know, for some of these uh, uh, security personnel who somehow fired the shots that killed the four teenagers and one woman. Yes, just like I, I said that, uh, you know, uh, if, okay, take a military for instance, there's uh, armed forces are that regulates the military. Yes. Okay. And that armed forces has, you know, prescribed the rules of engagement. Just like you don't, you know, uh, 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 fire somebody like that and all that and all that without a, a just cause. So if those people are being tried by court martial, and if it is a uh, place, they call it oddly room trial and all that. If they are found capable, they will go in for it. There's no, in fact, we were, last time we were discussing about right to kill yes. or right to take one's life. You don't have right to take one's life because life is sanctity. You cannot take life that you cannot give. So life is sanctity. 
there are other ways that can be done. In fact, the state, the criminal uh, 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 justice administration, is not just talking about, you know, killing somebody, you know, uh, dealing with somebody. The state wants to know, let the what crime goes through or the, the, the offender goes through the whole of criminal trials. By then, the government will know, have statistics, and the law enforcement will also the uh, tactics and the how the thing uh, the offense was committed will also be unraveled. You don't just kill somebody. If not, if somebody kills somebody, the state would have also killed the person immediately. Yes. But you need to pass through all these rigorous lay down procedures. Well, uh, Barrister, just hold your thoughts there. Uh, you can remember that you can also join us uh, in the conversation by visiting our social media pages at advntv.com. You can also watch us on DSTV channel 258 on Star Times channel 140 on Avo TV app on Limex World TV app as well as Niger TV app. You can also log on to www.advntv.com forward slash live to watch us from any part of the world. Now, as we continue this discussion, I want to draw your attention to, uh, you know, the Nigeria Criminal Code Act chapter 77 which says, and I quote, any person who levies war against the state in order to intimidate or overawe the president or the governor of a state is guilty of treason and is liable to the punishment of death. The hoisting of the flags that have been done in parts of the country were labeled as treasonable felony by both the defense chief and the president himself. My question is, what's will be the fate of these people that have been arrested, including the hoisters of the flag, sponsors, and the teller that was also arrested. Okay, we we'll take it as somebody protesting, carrying flag, and also calling another nation to come and, to come and defend him. Yes. How does he relate with intimidating the government? Okay. Well, just like I said before now, somebody that uh, is calling, is saying that I'm being killed. Yes. Somebody yes. said I'm being killed. It doesn't, uh, <laughs> well, I, you, government can say everything, anything that they want. The president can also say anything. The a chief of army staff or whatever can say anything. But it's another thing for the court to look at it and make interpretation in that respect. Of course, we have, this is not the first time that the president has been saying during the and just era. He woke up one day and said that the seat of the vice president is declared vacant. And the vice president went to court and won. We have seen where president and the, uh, president is the highest man in the land that yes. made pronouncement and they will go to court and it and will be win. set aside. Okay? Yes. Uh, talk more of chief of army staff and they, for whatever their proclamation or whatever they said is not the law. Well, th there is... Um, so also, unless that section 77 that talks about treason is being proved to the letter. Well, so, so let's uh, keep fingers crossed and see what uh, comes out in the next uh, few days, hoping that these people also have access to good lawyers to fight their cause. Well, uh, uh, this is not the first time that we are seeing protests in Nigeria. There will not, nothing will happen. <laughs> well, well ho hopefully, hopefully so. <laughs> no, nothing will happen now. Nothing will happen. No, oh, hopefully I'm, so. The, the, I'm the, telling you. The federal government has issued a probe on about four northern Nigeria political bigwigs with regards to this same issue of the Russian flag. It seems to me like the federal government is taking it more seriously than you are asserting. So uh, let's pick up a copy of the Punch newspaper and see what the story there says. On the front page of the Punch newspaper, it leads with the headline story, Russian flag, FG probes for northern political big wigs, influential political figures from Kaduna, Katsina, Bauchi suspected of sponsoring protests. FG deploys operatives in Niger Chad borders. Protest arrowheads this own Russian flag wavers. Three points here. The probe of the four northern political big weeks, the deployment of uh, security operatives to Niger, Chad and at uh, Niger and Chad borders, and the disowning of Russian flag wavers by protest arrowheads. Let me get your take on the first issue, the probe of the bigwigs. 
Well, um, what the government is doing is, I've told you, I said it before that they are, you know, you protect and guide your territory and know as to uh, ensure that this uh, protest is not, you know, hijacked and taken over. But the ordinary the, the protest should have been something that would come genuinely from the people, from the masses, as a result of the what they are passing through. But for somebody to you know sponsor protests, maybe you're a political a politician, you are out of game. You want to you know you want to uh, 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 give it back to the government. It's not a good one. If there is any need for one to complain, there are avenues for one to complain his grievances to the government, not to sponsor miscreants to be in the street. And when such a thing is done, when such sponsorship is done, you see that. The person will give the, the 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 masses or whoever that is engaging money go and do kill men and all that. So that government cannot look at you and wait for you to come and uh, you know take the laws into your hands and break down laws and all that. And even civil disturbances, breach of peace is a crime. So I commend the government for that. Let the government go ahead and uh, fish out whoever that is. Uh, though I said that protest is not a crime, okay? Yes. Uh, but sponsoring one to go and protest against the government government means that you are, you know, working against the government. There is an ulterior uh, motive. There is, an, there is, is something to that. So government should, uh, you know, take a, a, a look at that. And also in these uh, states in the north that have taken these uh, protests to another level, government should also, you know, deploy more security agencies so that they can uh, look at it and make uh, things that will make for the a peace and stability of people because protection of uh, properties in Nigeria is the primary responsibility of government. So government should look into that and ensure that such is done. Well, Barrister Peterson, this seems to be the first time in a very, very long while that the federal government of any regime at all, uh, you, you know, is taking up the issue of protest more seriously than, than um, is expected beefing up security in the borders, uh, making arrests, freezing accounts of diaspora sponsors. What, even the NSAS protest that, you know, occurred about four years ago, did not have this sort of uh, hit back from the government as much as this particular protest, which didn't even last as long or hasn't lasted as long as the NSAS protest did. Is there a particular reason for this harsh and strong fight back? By the government, yes. The what uh, we experienced during the NSAS uh, protest was there was none uh, cooperation of the North. Remember that the North they were doing their own protest, saying that they were fine with the government because they believed that one of theirs is there. Yes. Uh, so that was what uh, happened during the NSAS protest. So now the North, you know that the North, uh, there are there are willing to in the North, unlike in the South that are better. Uh, let me use that word, more organized than the not. So what government is doing is, uh, is a right step in the right direction. Because during that NSAS protest, they did not, they did not come because they felt that their brother was the president then. So, but uh, uh, average satana is ob objective. And they look at it that we need a better Nigeria. And this better Nigeria that we're talking about is not about the religion. It's not about where you come from. It's not about who you are and whatever have you. Because just like uh, during the campaign, they were saying that a Muslim will buy the same price a Christian will buy. You know, a Northerner will buy the same price that a, a, a Christian or a Southerner will buy. Yes. So what are we talking about? Um, the North, uh, the government should do more to ensure that there is peace in the North because the essence of government is provision of security and welfare. Let security be briefed off in the, in the North. And the NIA that is in charge of uh, 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 external security should also do more to see that these things are being curtailed whatever it is, so that there will be peace in the country. The statement has been made, the riot has been made, even in the, in the, in the, in the developed world, the protest is not infinite to me. It's not uh, uh, something that doesn't have an end. They have made their statement, and the government, I strongly believe, will, uh, uh, will do something in due course. And if nothing is done, such can they also be organized subsequently to continue to put the government in checks. Well, there, there is quite another twist to this uh, to these protests. Arrowheads, uh, protest leaders in parts of the country have disowned waivers of the Russian flag, which prominently was done in the northern part of the country. And we've seen reports that in places like Lagos, in Benin, in Port Harcourt, protest has ceased. 
uh, there seems to be a disparity between what is happening in the southern parts of the country and the northern parts of the country. Yes, just like what I said before that uh, the, the North did not cooperate when their brother was president. So I was even wanted to make a, a statement before and I said, is it just for an average Yoruba man to protest? You understand? What are you protesting? All the appointments, just like what one guy said. All the appointments, he said, all the, is it uh, so wrong? He said, out of 13 uh, announcements, 11 are Yorubas. All the appointments, just what, uh, somebody said he has taken the potism to another, another level. So government has, all this government has been Yoruba, 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 appointment, appointment, and Yoruba, well, uh, this, well, this. Well, well, I believe even in the past, administ <laughs> even in the past administration, yes. there, 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 there were, there were heavy, heavy allegations yes. of nepotism, you know, by the Muhammad Buhari led, well. who led and, government. And Tilbu has taken it to another level. <laughs> well, what are they well, 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 well they are this, this, is, this, this is particularly your opinion yes, on it, on this so issue. It's not my opinion. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a, 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 a objective opinion of average and well, Nigerian. Well, in closing, in closing, barrister, yes, yes. Uh, what do we see co happening uh, in the next couple of days? Say, in the next three days, as uh, the ten day period of the protest looks to come to a wrap up. And what should we also be expecting from the federal government, being that the president has, you know, issued a nationwide protest, which obviously didn't sit well with the masses? Uh, well, they say to whom much is given, much is expected. The president said he built Lagos. Let him come and build Nigeria and up his game. Let him shun nepotism. Let him, you know, go back and look at the stop structure, which is the economy. Our economy is going down the drain on a daily basis. What can government do? What are the social investment programs that government that can come up? He talks about bringing out these is it CN, CNG, C, buses. CNG buses. We have not seen any. He talks about all the things that he will do and all that. None is, nothing has happened. This is over one year and we have not seen anything. President to sit, sit up and do the needful and he, he promised to deliver on the mandate and we have not even seen the mandate talk more of delivering it. So let him sit up. He has less than three. It's just two and a half years, two and two years and some and some months to go. Uh, uh, Let the uh, president do the needful. Then the the citizens they should sheath their sword. The government has also known that Nigerians as of today cannot be taken for granted. And let there be a united Nigeria. Not when an issue will come up. The South will be taking another position. The North will also be taking another uh, uh, position. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister Peterson. I'm afraid this is where we have to wrap it up for this discussion. It's, a it's been a pleasure having you. It's a pleasure. God bless you, sir. Well, that has been Barrister Peterson Uweze, a legal practitioner and public affairs analyst who has been speaking to us concerning developments surrounding the, the nationwide protests, statements made by the federal government's defense chief as well as the DSS.